So you might ask yourself, why are we importing the CSV file? Can we try and import an Excel file instead? And the answer is we can, but we haven't quite covered the tools for that yet. I think it's important that we cover these tools now for importing from uh, CSV so that you understand how to do that most basic of data munging. And just to show you some of the bumps that you'll run into if you do try and import an Excel spreadsheet without the use of a, a more robust tool, um, I'd like to mimic it right now. So if we were trying to import rolling sales underscore Manhattan dot XLSX, Excel spreadsheet, we're going to get this Unicode decode error. Right? And if you see this, it indicates to you that Python can't quite read the file as it sees it. So a way to get around that is we could try and provide an encoding argument to this open call, something like this, encoding, and then maybe UTF-16, since UTF-8 does not seem to be working. Um, the way that I knew about this encoding argument was I looked up within Python's own documentation, uh, its open function, which you'll see right here. It says it has an encoding keyword argument. Keyword argument because uh, it starts uh, or defaults to a specific value. Um, and we can see that we can pass in a number of different types of encodings if we continued through the links to the codex page. But if we, even if we work through a bunch of the most common types of encodings, we'll see that we're not quite able to open up this file as we'd like. So again, we'll get to a better tool for opening up this file shortly and in the next module. Um, but for now, let's work on those basics that allow us to open up and data munge on the most flat of relational data, which is the CSV. Python's own internal tooling for opening up a CSV is the CSV library. And you'll see I import that here on line one of my next cell. So where did that CSV library come from? Well, it's part of the standard library of Python. Right? It comes for free when you install Python for the first time. It's there, you don't have to do anything more. For some of the other libraries, you'll have to go to the open internet or you'll have to go to PyPy, which is the Python package index, to install extra what are called third-party libraries or part libraries that are not automatically installed when you install Python. Just to give you a quick view of what the PyPy page for pandas looks like, I've navigated already to PyPy project pandas and you can see this is where you might grab the pandas package which will allow us to open up those more sophisticated relational sheets like an Excel spreadsheet. Going back to this cell, let's look at how we're going to use Python's own internal CSV package to open up this edited CSV file we created earlier. By reopening the file, again in read-only mode, since we didn't pass in a W into the open function, we'll have a new FP object we're going to pass that fp object to csv.dictreader. So instead of doing an fp.read, we're going to pass the whole file handle or the whole file pointer off to another object, another tool, which will create this reader object. And the reader object is going to create dictionary after dictionary that represents every row of information within the CSV. The dictionaries will be keyed by the column names, and they will be valued by the values for each row. Let's see what that looks like in this first cell. We only get one dictionary out. If you look closely, here's a curly brace at the end, here's a curly brace at the beginning, and we don't have any other dictionaries besides the one. Well, that's because as soon as we created the reader, we read only one row, and we've printed it out here on line six, and then we break. Break is a new keyword. Break allows us to stop iterating through a loop after we've hit some condition, or in this case, simply after we've run through the loop once. So by using this import keyword to import CSV, and then by using break to print out the first row in the reader's information, we can get a sense of the structure of the data within the CSV. We have burrow, which seems to point to some sort of number. We have lot, again, a number. 
zip code points to some sort of zip code number, and so on. Right? They are all, if you look closely though, strings. And we're going to have to work on that in just a little bit.